Hello, how are you doing today? Today's book is Freddy the Frogcaster. Now, we all know that April showers bring May flowers. So, Freddy is a frog and he loves the weather. So, in April, we get a lot of rain and sun because it's turning into springtime and the weather's getting warmer. So, we're going to read this book today. Freddy the Frogmaster. Blue skies, puffy white clouds, sunshine with a light breeze. Ah, perfect weather for lily pad hopping in the pond near Freddy's house. Freddy liked rainy days too, splashing in puddles, listening to pitter patter of rain on the roof. Snowy days were also lots of fun. A day off from school to build snow frogs. The air so cold, Freddy could see his own breath. Hot chocolate sitting in front of a toasty fire. All kinds of weather made Freddy happy. But what do you expect from a frog who loves the weather? Freddy's mom says, Freddy was born to be a frog caster. She remembers the very day it became clear Freddy was hardly bigger than a tadpole and she pushed him along in his stroller. He pointed at the big gray cloud and said, rain. It was his very first word. And he was right. Mama Frog barely had time to push the stroller home before it started to pour. From that day on, Freddie and his mom watched Sally Croker, the chief frogcaster on the Frog News Network, every morning. Sally was the best meteorologist in town. Everyone relied on Sally's forecast to calm, plan their weekends, trips, and events. As Freddy grew, he kept his eye on the sky, watching the clouds for clues about what the weather would be like each day. Some days, there were big heaps of puffy white clouds that looked like cotton candy. Sometimes, the clouds looked flat and hazy, like a big gray blanket covering the sky. Some clouds were wispy and curly, like a horse's tail. Freddy was so interested in weather that Papa Frog built him a weather station in their backyard. It had thermometers, barometers, and all kinds of weather gear. On the roof was a weather vane to show the wind's direction. Freddy's parents never had to ask him what he wanted for his birthday or special holidays. The weather books, charts, and tools they gave him always made him happy. Freddy started each day by gathering weather clues. He watched the clouds, of course, but he also paid attention to clues like temperature, barometric pressure, and humidity, too. Then he ran back to the house to watch Sally's weather forecast to see if his predictions were right. At first, Freddy's mom thought all his weather watching was cute, but Freddy was right so many times that Mama Frog couldn't help but post to her friends about Freddy's amazing weather prediction ability. Before long, the whole town knew before Freddy's frog casting ways. One day at school, Freddy's friend, Holly Hopper, was worried that it would rain on her birthday and ruin her outdoor party. The teacher, Miss Vivian, said, Why don't we ask her very own frog caster for help? Mrs. Vivian handed Freddy her chalk and Freddy drew the forecast on the blackboard. He explained how high pressure was hovering right over lily pad. This meant the weather should be sunny and warm for the next few days. Hooray! The whole class clapped and cheered when Freddy finished his report. He was so excited and very happy when Holly invited him. Then one day, something happened that changed Freddy's daily weather routine. Sally Croker, Freddy's favorite TV while Sally was out on tadpole duty. The Frog News Network hired a frogcaster to fill in. Her name was Polly Woggins. And oh boy, oh boy, was she a hit. Every group in town invited her to come speak at their meetings. From the Salamander Society to Leaping Lizard League to the Frog Masons and the Bullfrog Ballet. All of her special appearances kept her hoping hopping from dawn to dusk. Mm -hmm. 
all that attention was great for the news network. Even more frogs tuned in to see the new Frogcaster in action. But Freddy started to notice a change in the forecast. It seemed like Polly was so busy making all of her celebrity appearances that she didn't have time to watch for the weather clues. Several days in a row, Freddy's forecasts were more and more accurate than Polly's. Some days, Polly didn't seem to have a forecast at all. Mother Nature is being tricky today. It may be sunny or it may rain. Who knows, it might even snow. Be prepared. Frogs were hopping around town, juggling their umbrellas, sunglasses, and mittens. That way, they'd be prepared for any type of weather. One day, the mayor dropped by to pay Freddy a visit. He knew about Freddy's frog casting skills and needed a big favor. Mr. Mayor, what can I do for you, sir? Freddy asked politely. As you know, Freddy, the Leap Frog Picnic is just a week away. It is a big event for frog families near and far. It is important to have an accurate weather forecast that day, the mayor said. Why are you telling me? Freddy looked puzzled. Polly Woggins is the new frog caster. The mayor looked one way, then he looked the other way. He leaned in close and said in a quiet voice, Thing is, Polly is so busy with her frog dance, she barely has time to say weather, let alone forecast it. I need you to keep an eye on the weather so we can plan a great day. I'll do my best, Mr. Mayor, Freddie said. Then Freddie offered to show the mayor his weather station. As Freddie led the mayor out to the backyard, he explained, weather gets tricky to forecast this time of year. One day it's warm and dry, and the next it's cool and rainy. If it gets cold enough, it could even snow. The mayor was quite impressed with Freddie's weather station. Amazing, he declared. Certain he had found the right frog for the job. Remember, Freddie, the whole town is counting on you to get this right. Freddie wasn't about to let the town down. Every day he checked and rechecked all of the weather clues at least three times. Things are looking fine until the day before the picnic. If the cold front moving from the west mixed with the warm air blowing in from the south, it can bring fierce thunderstorms. Freddie knew about thunderstorms and picnics were not a good combination. And not just because it would soak up all their fried cricket sandwiches, it could put the frogs in real danger. Freddie was worried. Polly Loggins hadn't mentioned a word about the rain in her last report. Freddie had to do something. He called the mayor and asked him to meet at the weather station. But when the mayor arrived, he wasn't alone. Freddie's favorite TV broadcaster, Sally Croker, was with him. Tadpoles in tow. I heard you needed a little help, she explained. With no time to waste, Sally and Freddie started checking for clues about that cold front coming their way. Mr. Mayor, she said, Freddie was right. There's a big storm on the way. Maybe we can get the word to Polly in time for her last forecast. But they were too late. Polly was signing off, promising her viewers, be prepared for perfect picnic weather tomorrow. Uh-oh, said Sally. Uh-oh is right, said the mayor. Hey, wait a minute, said Freddie. She's not all wrong. The mayor and Sally were confused. Be prepared, said Freddie. She said, be prepared. We can do that. Why, yes, we can, agreed the mayor with a big sigh of relief. Come on, Freddie, we've got work to do. The big day started out just fine, sunny and warm. All the frogs were playing and laughing, diving into the lily pond and drying off in the warm sun. Right before lunch, things started to change. The fluffy white clouds turned gray and lumpy. These were a chill in the air and the wind started to howl. A loud rumble sounded in the distance. Big, sloppy raindrops began to fall. The mayor grabbed a megaphone and said, Please move your family and your food to the Frogatorium. I repeat, everyone head to the Frogatorium now. 
Buddy held up a big white sign with a red arrow pointing to the fleeing froggies in the right direction. Thanks to Sally and a big supply of umbrellas, everyone scurried to safety. In no time at all, the frogs were enjoying an indoor picnic, cheering on the winner of the fly eating contest, practicing for the leap frog race. Happy frogs were nibbling on food piled on the big tables that Freddy, Sally, and the mayor had set up the night before. They had taken Polly's advice to be prepared, and they were ready for sunshine or rain. Wouldn't you know it, the leapfrog picnic was a huge success. The mayor and Sally made sure everyone knew that Freddy's frog casting had saved the day. Freddy had never received so many high fives in his life. Even Polly Woggins stopped to stink thank him. She was a little embarrassed, but happy to give credit where credit was due. You know, Freddy, she said, I could use your frog caster skills like you with my frog cast. Would you like to be my assistant? I would, I would. Freddy couldn't help but hop up and down with excitement. Everyone laughed. Oh, look, said Sally, look over there. All the frogs turned to see where she was pointing. It was the biggest, most beautiful rainbow Freddy had ever seen. Freddy smiled. Things always look better after the sun comes out, and the future sure did look bright for this little frog caster. So now what I want you to do at home is I want you to think about your favorite season. So fall, winter, spring, or summer. And I want you to tell me what your favorite season is, is and why. So write me four sentences about your favorite season and draw a picture to go with it. So remember to use details. So if you show some in your picture, they'd be able to tell what season it is and maybe even what you like about it, what you like to do in that season. Okay. See you next time. Bye.